figure is um, Frank Bergman. He's a very uh, colorful personality in the organization. <laughs> Thank you. 
four players. Um, I will pro uh, present later, and I'll probably um, end this talk with. Um, I'll probably end this talk with uh, questions on, uh, on some of your, what are the conditions to win, who's got chances to win, um, and what's probably more interesting, or the most interesting question, is the winner of, of this open source race, of these four open source competitors, is he likely to be an, an inherit, to inherit the, the monopoly from SDI trials? Will we be able, will we, the open source guys, be able to, um, to um, kill the monopoly, and how could we do so? So that's um, that's a little bit the question um, I want to turn into, and um, obviously the question is how will this affect you guys, um, either on the on the customer side um, or on the LSP side. So maybe I'll try to go a little quick, uh, quicker through a run through the part of this presentation. We have some more time for. Okay. So, um, first of all, I'll engage for two minutes in shameless self-promotion. Uh, uh, Project Open, we are... Um, this moves. <laughs> it has to say it goes in, but if you do promotion, it just goes on. <laughs> towards localization service providers or translation agencies. So we're, Project Open is not in this space for translation customers so far. Um, we concentrated on this area because um, happened to be. We managed by being open source to be um, uh, number one in, 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 a, in three different areas basically. Uh, we managed to be number one in the um, number of installations. We got some 500 installations in uh, uh, LSD. So um, according to my numbers, uh, we would be leader in terms of installations. So Project Open is being used by some 500 translation companies to manage uh, not only translation work, but also finance, provider management, resource management, project portfolio, and other um, down to accounting. We just got rated for the second time by Common Sense Advisory as the number one in um, business management. So um, Common Sense Advisory is a consulting group um, uh, trying to do an independent review of translation tools in the market. And we just, uh, for the second year in a row, um, we're com coming, number one, coming out number one in what is the business functions. So Project Open currently does not any linguistic functionality, so we don't compete basically with an idiom or with an uh, across or whatever. But in terms of what is, uh, let's say, financial stuff and everything somebody needs to run your translation agency, so there we've been right number one. And being an open source um, uh, software, uh, we rate it relatively high in SourceForge, where we're basically the highest uh, number one in SourceForge if you're if you're looking for a combination of project management with some financial accounting stuff. So that's, um, we're very happy to have reached this in, in some five years, this position. And we got some large numbers of customers, some big customers amongst them. But, um, okay, enough shameless self-promotion. In April 2008, that's um, six months ago about. Sorry, that's not promotion now. <laughs> Uh, so six months ago, um, at TCOM uh, Spring, um, I had a very interesting conversation with um, somebody from Fold, I'll introduce them later, F-O-L-T, and um, looking for, in this conversation there emerged the idea of creating this um, tiny TM translation memory uh, as an open source translation tool uh, in order to fill a gap that's in the, in the industry basically um, there are some open source tools such as Omega T um, there's also a few other tools around 
but none of them really were suitable for the mass market of translation. And um, the idea that came up was um, uh, creating basically a clone of uh, Logoport. That's the, that's the language system, uh, a web-based translation memory that would be useful and, and suitable for both localization service providers and localization um, customers. And um, so that's the main thing that I want to lay out here. Um, that's new. Uh, TinyTM is new. Um, it, has, it is um, already available for download in uh, a source force. So there is uh, a translation server running, um, which is installable as a part of the database. And we currently have three different uh, clients, that means translation environments running. Very proud of that. We get some support from LRC here. Thank you, Rana. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's a working open source translation memory. We're in version 0 0.1. It's a developer version. Um, it's not yet ready for the final end users. So there will still need to be one or two versions um, before we can get really down to the um, um, <coughs> translation agencies. <coughs> That's, that's um, this new project what I really want to announce here. And what's happening now is um, players. I want to enter in the players. Um, why did we start uh, TinyTM in the first place? Um, that's a personal story. It's a story of, of a company, of an open source company that, that takes business case or looking at things we want to do. So we, we're working with Project Open since five years now, and we try to stay away always from the linguistic side, from the linguistic side of the business, in order to be neutral. But increasingly, customers have asked us um, um, to integrate Project Open with more and more translation memory. So it seems to be a need in the in the industry to not only um, deal with the business side, but also with the linguistic side. So we, as an open source company, integrate with all these across and and Trados and other. Um, um, translation memories, but wasn't a good feeling. So the idea was really, we needed, I was looking for an open source translation memory to integrate into our project open, and there was none. There was none that really worked. So that was the story why this uh, started. And um, during the story, or why, yeah, and, and I didn't find, find anything in basically in April, April there was nothing. And then, surprise, surprise, um, in the localization world, um, Berlin, in, in June 2008, we localized, um, announced um, that they would uh, open source global site, uh, formerly known as Ambassador. Thank you. No um, formerly known as Ambassador, they acquired. Um, Everybody knows who uh, we localized? It's uh, number 17, I think, in the world, according to the last um, numbers I saw in an organization service provider. Um, they acquired uh, Transware in 2007, and Ambassador just came as part of Transware. Um, it's, um, it's a globalization management system, a um, pretty, pretty large one. Um, they talk about a million lines of code, which is a lot of stuff, a lot of code, huge system. Um, we heard numbers of some, some 20 large customers using that. And um, they actually announced they want to come out with a version um, end of 2008. So um, when, I, when I heard that in, in uh, June, I was really surprised. And basically, um, I might have changed. We wouldn't have started. We might not have started TinyTM if that would already have been clear in, uh, in April. So we love those global side. They, they're American. Um, they started with uh, putting together a steering committee of some, I think they say 12 large um, translation buyers, these Googles and, and Adobe's and something, and so it looks pretty good. Um, we had another organization that um, already since, since three years uh, works on putting something together in an open source tool. Um, I've been tracking them, uh, we've been talking already um, in April 
April um, about working something together. My impression in April was that they are not going to get there because they're already there so three years talking that they want to put an um, open source translation memory together and, and nothing happened. So um, that has changed. Um, that has changed. Uh, followed its forum open language tools. It's, uh, it's kind of a German club. Um, it's mostly German companies uh, in there, some, some international, led by Euroscript. Um, you could also see it's the, say it's the technology branch, open source technology branch of Euroscript. That's my interpretation. Um, Euroscript trying to offer, uh, I think, number, well, it's number three, five, um, localization service provider. Um, without their own technology offering at the current moment, um, and apparently in order to compensate for that um, situation, getting involved in the fold or setting up fold. So it's a it's an it's an industry association type of organization, um, and they now get the terms. They have launched the Open TMS, is called their product. And um, what's interesting with Fold, because they are out there already since, uh, since three years, they got a pretty sizey community of um, about some 20 organizations from government, universities, uh, customers, uh, supporting this organization. So that's pretty, pretty big, um, big community already, but they haven't had any code yet. But they want to come out there with code um, this, also end of this year. And there's a third, um, or fourth, if counting Project Open Pythium. There's a fourth, fourth player um, who just um, recently popped up, it's called Andre AG, with their on tram system. Um, they're working with three very large customers um, in Germany, as far as I know. And uh, they have decided to open source the translation memory part of their globalization management system. So they get a whole globalization management system, and they're going to open source the translation memory, only the translation memory. That's apparently one of the best um, on the market. Um, I had a, some, some preview on their code, and that looks really promising. So here we may get a, um, a really cool um, translation memory open source with eight years of experience and the largest customer customers you want to look at. So, um, but this is not going to be in full open source GMS, it's just going to be this translation memory component, but it, it's, it's very likely that there will be more companies coming up just putting this translation workflow around their translation memory. So it's, um, it's another, I think, a strong, strong um, player here. So we get together with Project Open Tiny TM, which together would also um, provide a complete solution for both single language vendors and translation customers, we get four players in total um, that are not in the race. Questions so far? That was the boring part. And Google doesn't have a new TM system? Pardon? Google is not launching its new TM system? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we heard about that. Um, very recent, again, it's, uh, it's, we just started in April and there was nothing like that. So. It's not open source. It's not open source. It's not open source. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah you know, open source and hosted um, things are sometimes considered, from a, at least from a customer's perspective, to be similar. For, for a customer, it doesn't, doesn't um, interest them very much whether it's open source or not. It just needs a certain service model around that. And that their hosted and uh, open source um, field is similar. Um, except that if Google decides to stop the hosting, <laughs> you're stuck, right? So if you have open source, then the model there is you can at least use it and install it in, in, on your own system. So right. when you own it, yeah. I also believe in the advantages of open source, obviously, but um, I just say from the customers and from the purchase decision uh, perspective of the customer, the two fields are somewhat similar. So I think the question is very valid. Um, and, but let, let's see whether open source will be able to Sorry, what was the, what's the latency model for the one you just had? The previous. What is the latency uh, that's model? Andre AG on um, Antra. Antra. Yeah. Currently, it's a closed source globalization management system. It's used 
No, but the TN, what's the, uh, what's the model for that? I don't know what license they're going to use. I think it's going to be a GPL uh, v2 or something, version 2.0. Um, but they haven't really decided yet. May also become a more towards a uh, Eclipse uh, BSD license. So that's more industry friendly open source licenses. So it's, it's very promising. Um, very promising. If they really come out and it's really going to be as good as they say they're going to be, uh, it's going to be then we actually may scrap just TinyTM, this, this translation component, and just try to plug in Andre's uh, on track into project open as, as, um, as a solution. Because it's just a component, translation memory is quite isolated. Of course. Yes, please. Um, you talked about the other word, <coughs> and uh, the, the word, the, the Microsoft Word macro that goes in there, so it's nice to translate as a word in Microsoft Word, it's an environment they're familiar with. Do any of the tools that you described here um, have that? I just just to repeat the question: um, uh, uh, whether one of these no 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 problem. Um, whether one of these tools work with Microsoft Word? Uh, do any so similar to Travis and Logo for the the Microsoft Word macros? Yes. Uh, yeah. Do any of the tools you described here, Android to uh, uh, do any of those tools have that kind of? Yeah, maybe we can find the answer in this in this uh, drawing here, um, showing the, the general um, architecture of TinyGen, but also of LogoPort and a few others. What we can see is um, we got a client-server environment. So um, on the one hand, you got a translation memory server, as in the case of LogoPort, TinyGen, and Andre um, on track. So this is just a server component. And you can plug in different types of clients in the front, which can be a web client, let's say a web application of the web um, translation environment. It could also be a word macro. And very in particular with uh, TinyTM, we got we actually started off with a word macro as the first client for TinyTM. So that's the core TinyTM uh, translation environment. And then now we got MetaTexas, that's a small, that's a that's a smaller uh, translation memory, <coughs> also as for word, exclusively for word. They, they created tiny <coughs> meta texts for tiny TM. So instead of using their local TM, meta texts can connect to our tiny TM, TM server in the same um, Martin Wunderlich, uh, now from Salesforce, uh, started to work on integration for Omega T. That's one of the very first open source tools around. And Omega T uh, now can also talk to tiny TM server. So the question, the question really is, or, or the, the answer is that there's a separation between server component, which is doesn't care how you, what's in front of it, and there's client component. And the idea is, hopefully, it's easy, relatively easy to do client components. And um, so, yes, there is a Microsoft Word like a, a, a macro thing, yeah, through MetaTexas and through the tiny tab. The MetaTexas is closed source, so. Um, it's a closed source tool that you need to buy a license in order to connect to the TinyGM server. But if you go from TinyGM client, you can just download this from the web, um, a SourceForge page and, and you're, you're set up. We, LRC has got, um, uh, we're very friendly to provide some hosting facilities for us. So there's uh, the uh, TinyGM demo server, which is also like a live uh, TM and database. It's hosted by LRC. And, um, so by default, this client that you download, which is just like a Word document, connects to that server. So yes, everything's there. Thanks. Um, five and seven minutes. Um, so um, I got some some things prepared. Something gen uh, generic about open source, but um, I see from this conversation, I think we don't need to dig in there. Um, I think um, I think the more the more the most interesting question um, we got is this one: Who will win? <laughs> um, or to be more specific, um, which of the four players, or maybe fifth, sixth, I don't know if there's other players, uh, will win? And um, if they might win. Um, Will the winner be able to um, inherit the monopoly from, from SDL um, idiom travels? Um, I, th 
I think that's, that's the main question, isn't it? Um, who of these four guys have the biggest chances? And um, the, good, the good news is um, this, a more detailed analysis of this will come up in multilingual computing in uh, the November, December issue. I think this is, this is just a preview of an article that's going to be uh, published there, so um, you'll have the opportunity to read a little bit more detail. But um, so what I, what I want to limit myself in the next five minutes is, is just the success factors, um, seeing uh, two minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much.